Have you ever felt frustrated using AI coding tools, not getting the results you expect? You're not alone. This is the second tutorial in our Mastering AI Coding series. In the first video, we discussed the main differences between chatbots, such as ChatGPT, and coding assistants, such as Ader, Kodi, Cursor, and others. And we got a feel for what it's like to work with the various types of AI coding assistants and showed a few of their capabilities. Now, if you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend you go back and do that before watching this video. In today's video, we're going to tackle three key areas to help you get the most out of your AI tools so you can supercharge your development workflow. And once you master just these three simple concepts, a lot of other pieces are going to start falling into place for you. Here are the three main concepts we'll dive into. One, working iteratively with AI. Two, understanding context and how to provide it to AI tools. And three, crafting effective prompts. These strategies will help you improve your interactions with any generative AI tool, leading to better, more reliable results. And they apply across the board, whether you're using a chatbot to help you evaluate a technology or create a document, or you're using a coding assistant to generate code. Without understanding and practicing these basics, you really can't get good results from current AI technologies. So let's start with the concept of working iteratively. A common mistake many developers make is asking AI tools to perform too much in a single shot, which can result in poor responses. Always stop and think about the size and complexity of the task you're asking AI to perform for you. Break down larger or more complex tasks into smaller, more manageable pieces. This is the way we human developers work when we're working on software projects. Now, as an example, let's imagine we're just starting to build a new app that lets us manage customer information and we're using the Ader Coding Assistant to help us get going with our coding. Now starting with a prompt like this is a really bad idea. Generate a full stack customer management app with a React frontend, Node.js backend, Mongo database, user authentication, and CRUD operations. Now why is this a bad idea? Well, it's too broad. We're asking too much at once. The AI will likely generate either wrong, incomplete, or generic code. Also, if the AI does generate correct code, it'll likely be too much for you to review and understand all at once, and you must understand the code whether you wrote it or not. Instead, start small and build iteratively. Begin by asking the AI to create a basic structure for your app. For example, create a new React app that manages customer records with basic project library dependencies and a basic folder structure for the app. Do not implement all functions yet, but implement just enough to provide a runnable app. Here's the Ader Coding Assistant working on our basic prompt to bootstrap our project. We get a very basic React app that displays a couple of mock customers. And now that we have that working, we can implement the Add Customer feature. Now, although I'm not showing this here, we should, of course, also be reviewing the code to understand it and writing unit tests as we go. AI Coding Assistants can help us with those as well. Now, once that's working, gradually build from there. Breaking it down into smaller prompts makes it more likely AI will generate what you want and make it easier to control and refine the AI's output. It's much more like working with a human colleague, iterating on one thing at a time. This approach doesn't just help avoid overwhelming the AI, it also helps you from getting overwhelmed and it allows you to catch and correct issues early in the development process. Basically, it keeps you from tearing your hair out. Etch this into your brain or put a big sign above your monitor that says this, always, always work iteratively and break down complex tasks. Okay, now let's talk about the idea of context as it relates to using AI for software development. It's important to understand that LLMs were trained on data up to a point in time. For example, Claude 3.5 Sonnet's training cutoff date is April 2024, and GPT-4.0 was trained on data up to October 2023. Now this means that if you're trying to use APIs and frameworks that are either new or that are getting updated frequently, you'll likely need to provide the AI tools with some external documentation or examples or both. Also, in general, these models will only train on publicly available data. They have no knowledge of your internal or private information. For instance, they don't know which tech stack you prefer to work in, and they certainly can't help you work on your code unless you or your chatbot or your coding assistant provides your existing code or portions of it to them. For example, here I want ChatGPT to help me create a high-level design for a new microservice I need to implement. Maybe I have a requirements document, also a document that describes my team's tech stack. Now I can provide both docs to ChatGPT, 
along with my prompt to provide the context it needs. I can also direct ChatGPT to ask me to provide any additional information. When using chatbots, we typically have to gather the needed context and manually provide it. However, when using an AI coding assistant, the assistant gathers most of that context for the LLM, such as our directory structure, function signatures, and sections of our code, along with lots of other helpful context on our behalf. And this is one of the main reasons I prefer using coding assistants versus chatbots when working with code-related tasks. To see what this looks like in practice, let's look at an example of the context the Ader AI coding assistant provides to the LLM. I've launched Ader with an option to save Ader's entire LLM input and outputs to a file. And I'm starting to work on an existing code repo that's new to me. I ask Ader to analyze the code and tell me what it's all about. Ader goes to work gathering up info to provide to the LLM to get us an answer. We can see everything Ader's sending to and receiving from the LLM in the log file. Ader provides instructions to the LLM in addition to what we provided and it provides basic info on the code base, such as directories, file names, function signatures, and so forth. And based on that, we get our initial analysis from Ader. So far, Ader only provided high-level info, such as function signatures, to the LLM, but not the bodies of any functions yet. For that, Ader offers to add the full source code of specific files to our session so the LLM can provide better analysis. I'll add a couple of files. We can see in the Ader log file that Ader is going to resubmit our request to the LLM. Remember, an LLM doesn't remember anything in between requests, so it's going to pass all the same context that provided previously to the LLM, including the file names and function definitions. But this time, we can see that Ader is adding the full source code of the files we specifically added to the context. Now, the LLM will provide a new answer for us, but this time, it has access to more complete context about the code repo. Now, if instead of analyzing code, we were asking Ader to implement a new feature, write a test, fix a bug or whatever, the process would be much the same as far as context. It's just that in that case, Ader would focus in on the specific files relevant to our task and provide the contents to the LLM. And instead of instructing the LLM to answer a question, it would instead instruct it to generate or edit code. Context is necessary. However, LLMs do have limitations when it comes to providing very large amounts of context in a single interaction. Now, we'll explore this in more detail in future tutorials or inside our school community. And speaking of our school community, now I want to take a minute to let you know that we've just launched a new school community also by the name Coding the Future with AI. You can expect much deeper discussions on the topics we're discussing here, plus a lot more topics, all related to using AI for software development. You'll be able to ask for help, help others, join group calls to get help, and share your experience. We'll also offer other learning material there that goes beyond what we can offer here on our YouTube channel. Right now, you can join this community for free. And once you join, your membership will remain free forever. However, we will be moving to a paid subscription by no later than the end of this year, 2024. Again, if you join before we transition to paid membership, you'll be grandfathered in and keep your free membership. Now I put the link to the new community in this video's description. If you're getting value from our YouTube content, you're definitely going to get even more value from our community. For now, here are a few basic rules you should keep in mind. First, break down context. Provide the most relevant information needed for the current task and avoid overloading the assistant with too much context at once. Second, iterate and refine. Start with high-level context and add details incrementally, ensuring the assistant has a clear and concise view of your project at each step. And finally, ask the AI tool what it knows. When in doubt as to what context it currently has access to, ask the AI tool. When I'm not sure whether the AI tool has certain information in its context, I might ask it something like this. Summarize your understanding of the main requirements for the app we're building. Now, if the AI tool's response indicates it's missing important context, you need to pause and get that added before moving on. Without the necessary context, you risk going further and further off the rails. And finally, let's talk about the all-important concept of prompt engineering. Now that we understand context and its limitations, the next step to mastering AI coding assistance is learning how to craft effective prompts. This skill is called prompt engineering. And while prompt engineering can be broad and complex topic involving many techniques such as tree of thought, self-evaluation, and many more, 
I found that for most software development scenarios, just a few fundamental practices are enough to get great results. First, let's define what prompt engineering is. It's simply about giving clear, concise, and specific instructions to guide the AI in generating the results you want. In software development, well-crafted prompts can help the AI understand your requirements, your constraints, expectations much better. But let's not overcomplicate it. For most coding tasks, I recommend sticking to these three guidelines. First, be clear and specific. When prompting, always be clear and specific about what you want the assistant or chatbot to do. Avoid vague instructions like, fix the issues in this code. Instead, tell the AI exactly what issue to address and where to focus, like this. Identify and fix the null pointer exception in the get user method of this Java class. And oh, by the way, unlike when using a chatbot for code, a coding assistant usually can see the errors without any copy and paste. So you can just say, fix the last error. By providing more detail, you help the assistant zero in on the problem and produce a more targeted solution. Next, constrain the assistant's scope by specifying exactly what it should do and what it should not do. This keeps the AI from making changes outside the intended area and increases the probability of it producing correct output. For example, only modify the get user method and do not change any other functions in this class. And here's the trick that many developers overlooked or maybe they don't know. If you're not sure how to phrase a prompt, just ask the assistant for help creating a great prompt. For example, I wanna create a brand new React app I need your help in crafting a good prompt that will get the best results from you in generating that app. And here's my initial prompt. Generate a full stack customer management app with React front-end, Node.js back-end, MongoDB database, user authentication, and CRUD operations. Help me refine that such that the scope of the initial request is manageable and clear for an LLM. I want to build the app iteratively and in small steps. Now I plug this prompt into Ader itself and it gives me a very well-crafted prompt I can use to, well, have Ader do what I need. Since I'm still inside Ader, I can just say, hey Ader, go ahead and execute the prompt you just created for me. We have to start thinking about software development very differently now. We now have tools that can teach us how to use them and then even turn around and use the guidance they just generated themselves as their own input to execute the next step for us. As I hear myself saying that, I'm getting kind of dizzy. Kind of mind-blowing, but super cool. Now I hope this tutorial helped you better understand the fundamentals of using AI coding tools effectively. Let's recap. First, work iteratively. Small, manageable tasks are key to getting great results. Second, always provide the right context. Whether you're working with a chatbot or coding assistant, context can make or break your experience. And finally, craft effective prompts. Clear, specific, and concise instructions will help you get exactly what you want. If you start implementing these strategies today, you'll see a huge difference in how AI supports your coding workflow. It's about turning these tools into true partners in your development journey. And we're just getting started. In the next video, I'll show you how to put these concepts into practice by creating a simple app from scratch using AI, demonstrating the complete workflow step by step. As always, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. And I'd love to hear your thoughts or challenges when using AI coding assistance. So drop a comment below and don't forget to check out our school community. That's where we dive even deeper into these topics. And I look forward to meeting you there. I'm Tim Kitchens, coding the future with you. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video in the series.